You open your hand, Lord, and satisfy us. My name is Father Bonga Machola, in all place of Mary Immaculate. On behalf of Radio Veritas, I ask you to open your hands and offer your gifts of love. After the homily, I request that you make your offering using the following bank details. Radio Veritas, Net Bank, branch code 191305. Account number 191329-6067. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Dear friends, here we are celebrating the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. And we encounter Jesus, who is the bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. He's the one who feeds us. He's the one who provides for us. He's the one who satisfies our deepest longings. At the beginning of this celebration, we pause for a moment. We got in touch with our own spiritual hunger and thirst. We get in touch with our weaknesses, with our brokennesses, and we, we pray for healing, for forgiveness, and for God's mercy. And, the and therefore, we prepare our hearts to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. At that time, the whole congregation of the sons of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. I have heard the murmurings of the sons of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay round about the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake-like thing, fine as hoarfrost on the ground. When the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, we will tell them to the next generation the glories of the Lord and his might. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna to eat and gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. He sent them abundance of food. So he brought them to his holy land, to the mountain his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, this I affirm and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their minds. You did not so learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus. Put off the old man that belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new man, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. At that time, when the people saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him has God the Father set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger and he who thirsts, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, I am always very fascinated by uh, the story of the children of Israel uh, journeying with God in the desert. Uh, you know the story very well how God sent Moses to go and liberate them from the Egyptians. And Moses led the people. Um, but it was not just Moses, it was God himself who was leading his people. And there was a covenant that God made with his people. You will be my people and I will be your God. Um, and then there is a beautiful relationship that develops between God and his people. Uh, but as we know, this relationship is, is really a relationship of an unfaithful people with a faithful God. And God, the beautiful thing about, it, about this journey and the relationship with his people is that he remains faithful. Uh, he remains faithful. He forgives. He gives his people another chance. He never gives up on them. Yes, he gets angry. He puts them to the test. Uh, but he renews uh, his, 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 his faithfulness to his people. The people are struggling on the journey. So they fall. They doubt. They question. As, as we hear today, they're murmuring and, and asking, why did you liberate us from Egypt so that we can die in the desert. Um, and God reveals himself. I think the, the main thing what we, we read today is a God who reveals himself to these people. So he says he's a God who listens, first of all. He listens to their memory, and he responds, and he provides. And that's our God. Uh, God continues to listen. Uh, we pray sometimes and we struggle. God is not responding to our prayers. We doubt, is he hearing us? God listens. That's our God. He listens to our desires. He listens to, to, to whatever we say to him. And he takes his time. We have to be aware of that. He's a God who takes his time. And he knows what is right for us. And he responds at an appropriate time. And he provides. He's a provider. And that's a God we, we encounter today. And it is, this is very important for us as a people of God on the journey. As I was saying, the story of the people of, of Israel is in actual fact our own story. We journey with God. We struggle with faithfulness. God remains a faithful God. 
a God who will never ever give up on us, a God who journeys with us, who, a God who listens, who hears our pleas and our prayers, and he responds. Yes, it might take time, but he responds. And eventually he's a God who provides. He is a provider. And I think the fundamental thing then for us today is to be aware of those gifts that God gives to us, is to, be, to learn to be a grateful people. Gratitude is a fundamental thing for us as Christians. We serve a God who provides, a God who created us for himself, a God who will never give up on us, a God who gives us life in abundance. And it is important that on a daily basis we pause for a moment and we count our blessings. God has given us so much. And the little we have, we have to appreciate and be grateful. And the children of Israel are struggling with that. They are not being grateful at all. And as we try to be grateful, what you will discover um, on that journey of gratitude, I always say, you know, uh, the most joyful people I've encountered in my life are those who are able to say thank you, are those who are able to be grateful for, little they, for the, even how little they have, but they will be able to say thank you, and I'm grateful for this. Those people are the happiest. Those people are the most joyful people I've, I've known. And therefore, let us pray for that gift, gift of gratitude, uh, to be grateful and to count our blessings. And when we do that, we become what exactly St. Paul tells us in the second reading. Uh, we put on a new man. Uh, we become aware that we are created in the likeness of God. We become aware of that godliness which is within ourselves. God created us in his own image. He knows who we are. He knows our needs. He knows our desires. But once we pause and we are able to, to be grateful, we become aware of how worthy we are in the eyes of God. We become aware of our dignity in the eyes of God. And we are able to live as children of God. It begins with gratitude. It begins by being aware uh, that we serve a God who journeys with us, who listens to us, who hears us, and who provides for whatever we need. And we are grateful for that. Now, the gospel reading is very interesting today. You know, um, as you will remember last week, uh, Jesus, we had uh, the multiplication of uh, uh, loaves and two fish, and he provided for this crowd. And today he has left the crowd, he moves to the other side, and they followed him. And then there is a discussion which uh, takes place between him and these people uh, that are following him. There's about four um, elements or exchanges that they, he has with these people. First of all, they say to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And he says to them, you know, you are looking for me, but not because you want to know me. You're looking for me because you saw the signs. You want more food. Now, this is something very beautiful. You know, there is a famous saying that whenever you ask a question, you already have an answer. If you've done um, some psychological uh, accompaniment or something like that, or counseling of some sort, uh, they always look for the questions you have, but they help you to discover the answer within yourself. You have the answer already of what you are asking. And that's what Jesus is saying with these people. He helps them. He unmasks their um, untruthfulness, and he helps them to discover the truth within themselves. That in actual fact, you're running after me, but you're not looking for me in sincerity. You're looking for signs. Uh, so purify your motives. What are you looking for? Now, this is very important for us as well in our journey of faith. Why are we Christians? Why are we running after Jesus? Why do we pray? Is it just for what I need, for what I want? Uh, we have to remember, dear people of God, that we are in a relationship with God. And like any other relationship, it's a two-way thing. It's myself and you. It's God and us. Uh, and it's not just a relationship where I want, you know, what I want, what I need, what I, what I deserve, what I merit. But also, what does God want? So we need to purify our motives as we go to God. That is not just about what I want, but it's a relationship with God. I come to God because I love God. I want to be with God. Uh, I am at peace when I'm with God. Not just because he provides for me, but also because he's there for me. I can be with him. I can be in a relationship, an intimate relationship with God. And that's what our faith is all about. It's about a relationship. It's about a presence um, of God in my own life and being aware of that presence. So Christ unmasks that. That let us not be blocked by what God does for us, but also let us be aware that God wants to be in a relationship with us. He wants to be in an intimate relationship with us. That's what God desires. And therefore, God will give us things. And it is important that we not stop at what we have received, but we, we fall in love with the giver. 
uh, not just the gift, but the giver himself, who is God. And, and this is very, very challenging. Sometimes when we pray and, and our prayers are not answered, we turn away from God. We are angry with God. But the fundamental thing is not what God gives us or what he doesn't give us, is the fact that he loves me. I'm in a relationship with him. And that relationship is nourished by prayer. Not only a prayer demanding things, but a prayer, a free prayer, a, a, a generous prayer of being in the presence of the Lord developing that relationship with the Lord. So Jesus is helping these people to be aware of that, that it's not about food, it's not about your needs and your desires, it's about a relationship, it's about a presence. I am here for you. Can't you be aware of my presence in your life? And that is something very important for us. Um, the, second, the second thing, the second point uh, after that, that Jesus unmasks once again, uh, they say to him, then what must we do? Um, what works must we do, you, you know, so that um, to be doing the works of God? And, and once again, they, they make a mistake, uh, you know, the same mistake which we will make always ourselves. It's very easy to be doing things. I, I think God loves me because I've done one, two, and three. God loves me because I've prayed the rosary. God loves me because I've given this to the poor. But at the end of the day, it's not a question of doing. It's a question of being. As Jesus says to him, to them, believe. It's a question of believing. And once again, that takes us to the essence of our faith. We are children of God. It's a question of being before doing. Whatever we do comes as a result of who we are, of our relationship with God, and then we are able to do things. But first of all, do I really believe in this presence? Do I really believe in this fact that I am the son, a daughter of God, that I am in a relationship with God? So that being is very important before the doing. Um, so there is something as well we need, we need to be aware of. Uh, we need to develop in our own journey. That It shouldn't just be, I'm loved because I've done one, two, and three. No, God loves me because I am his son and daughter, because he created, he created me in his own image. I am before everything else. I am. Um, that is something important for us. And, and we have to be in touch with that reality before we do things to be. And then the, the, the other point as well, which comes out very clearly here, they say, um, they, they are asking for signs. They say, what signs would you give us so that we can believe? It's another mistake. They are following him because they've seen the sign of the multiplication of, of loaves, but still they are asking for a sign. And yet they know exactly the truth. And Jesus Christ, he says, you know what? The food you ate, you were not just, it was not Moses who gave you, it was my father in heaven. And he says, he has sent that to you in actual fact. He says, I am. And once again, here we meet this God who reveals himself. This I am, the bread of life, this I am, takes us back uh, to when God revealed himself to Moses on a burning bush. And Moses said, what is your name? What am I going to say to the people you're sending me to? And he said, I am. I am has sent you. And now in this New Testament, it's Jesus who becomes I am. Fully God, fully divine. And, and this is the God we serve, a God who reveals himself, a God who wants to be known. He's not just hidden in the clouds, but he wants to be known. He wants us to feel his presence. He wants us to be in a relationship with him. Now, the fundamental thing about John chapter 6, as you know, is, is the Eucharist. This is the teaching on the Eucharist. I am the bread of life. And what happens in the Eucharist in actual fact is all about that real presence. A God who still journeys with us even today. A God who is still with us today. A God who loves us today. A God who will never change. A faithful God. This is the God. I am the bread of life. He comes to us in a simple uh, species on bread and wine. But in actual fact, he is fully present. He is with us. And we are invited, therefore, to embrace this presence. To be aware of this presence. Before we can be aware of our desires, in actual fact, let us be aware of the presence of God who dwells within us in the Eucharist. A God who journeys with us. A God who is so close to us. A God who comes and it becomes our food. And he says, once you have eaten this bread, you will never hunger. You will never thirst. Why? Because once you have possessed the giver, you have everything. It's no longer about what he gives, because what he gives is life itself. He gives us the whole of himself. And once we embrace that, once we're in touch with that, everything else is secondary. Dear people of God, may we fall in love again with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. May we be disturbed and be moved by how much he loves us. May we never ever allow ourselves to get used to the Eucharist. May it always surprise us that he comes to dwell within us, that he's really present, he's, he's really present in our midst, and he loves us so much. May we never, ever grow used to that. May we be disturbed and be moved by this reality. And may God bless us. 
as he reveals himself to us, may we also be willing to be revealed in authenticity before him. And may he bless us, and may he feed us, and may he continue to nourish us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God who gives us the bread from heaven that we might believe in the one he has sent. We make our prayers asking that our faith in Christ may be strengthened. Please respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the church throughout the world that it may be an effective sign of the way to everlasting happiness and eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for peace, that the world will turn away from violence as a means of settling disputes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the leaders of nations that in their policies and actions they may always work for the common good of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those in need and for those who are committed to their service that they may never cease to work for justice in our society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for our own parish communities, uh, that nourished by the bread of life, we may share the gifts of God with others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick, especially those suffering from COVID-19 and the housebound, for the burdened and the bereaved, all those who have lost their loved ones, that Christ's love will comfort them in their need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in silence, we present our own prayers to the Lord. And together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our Father, you sent your Son among us, born of Mary. May our response to your word be deep and true, so that we might make him known to the world. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbly shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat, eat this, this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us with you to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Buti Tlachale our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with with your your spirit. spirit.
spirit gave life to the world for me by this your most solid body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O 
a company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-fading care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.